Jill Taylor is die skeper en besieder van het program Max Steel Maestros, wat de vorm de rol gespeeld het in die leven van atletes soos Natalie Toy, Chad Leclou en Oscar Pistorius. Maar wat eerstens tot stand gekom het om jong talentvolle en minder bevoorrechte atlete te help. They are still out there with raw talent, with no opportunities, uh, with no finances um, and it allows us to, to unearth them and, and start to bring them through so that a big shock in 2004 with our first Olympians and we hadn't anticipated that so we had to drop the name of the future because we suddenly were Max Steel Maestros now, <laughs> you're not <coughs> of the future. <coughs> and then it's followed through um, very nicely each Olympic Games we've had some kind of representation. Lang for Max Steel Maestros was Tyler de Elwe, Engelse en Geskiedenis Onderwijser by Westerfurt. Sy het in Amerika as Fulbright Beershouwer studeer, maar na haar terugkeer betrok een graak by die Pasmo Trust. Dit het op talentvolle swaard cricket en hockey spelers in townships gefokus. In 2001 het Maxiel Maestros ontstaan uit die samensmelting van die Pasmo Trust as ook die Adopt an Athlete program van die Sportwetenskap Instituut van Zuid-Afrika. Deels daar focus die Maestros program ook op alternatieve loopbane vir sportmense. The whole world is now realizing that there's got to be a dual career while they're playing. It can't wait for afterwards. And we have, we have amazing statistics from the All Blacks rugby team that when they finished being All Blacks and going to retirement, for the first six months, approximately 75 to 80% of them can't find jobs. Now that to us is, is crazy. We think of the All Blacks rugby players as gods. Mm -hmm. So we, we're moving into that area where we say, yes, your cricket or your rugby is, is, is important to you and you have a short window period to be in that, but you have to be doing stuff at the same time that is going to give you some kind of career. And the days of being able to say, everyone must go into a university while they're playing, it's unrealistic. It's unrealistic because you don't have the time with the pressures that are now on in professional sport. And it's unrealistic because so much more now we need vocational guidance and not necessarily academic guidance. A uh, tremendous amount of our players, our athletes, need to go into carpentry and plumbing and, and various other vocations and not go through a, a one-size-fits-all university system. Tyler vertel ook hoe houdings, soos om ten alle koste te wen, enorme druk onder sportlui veroorzaak. And so what we find is professional attitudes have crept in where it's win at all costs and where it's, you are, an athlete is doing things more for extrinsic value than intrinsic. So it's not so much about the me feeling good, it's about what can I get if I do well. So it's about money, it's about prizes, it's about um, the glory, the glamour, the sponsors who will give you fantastic cars and you can wear Oakley and you can mm. all that sort of thing. Mm. Um, and that has been detrimental, that because of that, their entire being, their whole self-esteem, self-confidence revolves around the success in their sport. And that is taken just suddenly, if it's an injury, it takes a bit of time if it's retirement, but again, because the professionalism has putting so much pressure on coaches, it, we, we change our coaches more often. Uh, and we've all seen various high profile players that have just suddenly not been put on the team because the coach doesn't like their style or doesn't think that they fit in with what they want and they are just suddenly and it really is the, the hero to zero syndrome. Um, and that's why we look at these impressionable peer uh, pressurized times of about 15, 16. And we work with these athletes individually. We believe in one-on-one -on -one mentoring. For us, Groot, give Tyler a example of one person, Porsche, that in the Maxil Maestro's program has been saved. And Porsche, um, grew up um, in, in one of the township areas and she had to walk 12 kilometers to school every day. Mm. And one of the fantastic things about Portia is she's 
tiny. She's really very, very short. And she said she just was determined that she was going to be good at sport. And she said, she said, Joe, I tried netball, I was useless. I tried running, I was useless. I tried tennis, I was useless. She said, I tried everything, I was useless. And one day somebody said to me, why didn't you do weightlifting? And then she said they all just rolled around laughing. It was the funniest thing anyone could have said to her. And she said, but the girl was serious. And so I said to her, I can't do weightlifting, I'm so little. And she actually went with this woman, and of course they have categories. Yes. So it was fantastic for her. And, uh, and Portia went and it became an, an overwhelming success, so much so that she has, um, she has medals from uh, Champion of Champions, Commonwealth Games, uh, all, those, all those kind of activities.